morning and welcome. I'm excited to be talking to you guys today about bringing houseplants inside as we're coming into the winter season. Um, as we go into fall, you know, we have some nice warm days, but we start getting chilly nights. It's important to be paying attention to the weather to be able to get your plants inside before they get a frost on them. If you have certain tropical plants that you want to bring in or certain items you'd like to even take out of your containers um, and replant to bring into the house. So um, what for a couple things I want to really talk about are, you know, if you're bringing house plants inside, you really need to spray them numerous times with insecticides to eliminate the possibility of bugs being brought into the house. You know, your house is like an incubator. And so if you have bugs on your plant outside, there's natural predators, there's rain, there's wind, there's things you're going to help eliminate those bugs outside. Well, you bring them into your house, there's no predators, there's no wind, there's no rain, and those pest populations can explode. And so it's really important first and foremost to make sure that we're spraying. Um, you may need to trim your plants back a little bit if they've gotten really huge outside and you don't have room for that in your house. You may have to do some selective pruning, trimming back, cleaning the plants up, brown leaves, uh, just ugly looking leaves, stuff like that. And um, you may also need to repot. Now with repotting, I really don't encourage you to repot your plants this time of year. The best time to repot your house plants or your patio pots would be in the spring going into longer days. Right now our days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Throughout the winter we typically have very cloudy days and so um, it's just important that bringing your plants in, you don't want to repot them, encouraging them to grow. When we're going into less light, cloudier days, we want to do that in March or April as we're moving them outside so that it's nice uh, growth that's coming onto the plants when we repot them. So one thing I'd like to introduce you guys to, this is a new introduction to our catalogs that we uh, put together. Uh, this is our Tropicals catalog. It's a really great resource. It goes through different tropicals that you could use on your patio or also that could be house plants. Some basic how, how to uh, tips in there, uh, overall care for different plants. Um, if you guys are here in Kansas City and you want to swing by one of the family tree locations and pick these up, they are free. Uh, we are excited to hand these out as customers come in. Um, if you're not in Kansas City but you would like access to this information, you can go to our website www.familytreenursery.com and you can find the link in, under the um, departments and go under tropicals or you can also click the link below and that'll take you straight to the catalog for the PDF version. So we would love for you guys to pick these up and utilize this resource. This is something we put together uh, for you to be successful in gardening. And so um, feel free to pick one of these up or like I said, go check out the online version as well. Now, let's go back to the couple things we talked about with before we bring them in. We wanna spray, we wanna treat for pests and make sure the plants are clean. One thing I'd really like to encourage you in would be a systemic houseplant insect control. Now, what this product does is I was related to, think if you were to inject something into your bloodstream and so that if a mosquito bit you, it died. That's basically what it does to the plant. It puts it into the vascular system of the plant and then as soon as like a scale or some of your sucking insects suck on it, um, it will kill those insects. This is a product that needs to be reapplied. This one specifically anyways, needs to be reapplied every eight weeks. So every two months, we're gonna reapply this granular product on the soil and we're gonna water it in. The plant will take it up and then it will protect it from insects. I really like any house plant that is not something that's edible. You cannot use this on citrus, on herbs, on other vegetables but anything that's uh, just decorative ornamental is a great product to use year round, whether it stays in your house all year long or whether it's something, especially I would say, if it's something that you take out in the summer and bring back in in the winter, this is definitely an important product to be thinking about all year round. okay? So first thing would be doing that. <clears throat> the next thing would be is ideally you would get three to five applications of spray on before you bring the plant in. A lot of people wait until the last minute, all of a sudden it's like, oh, tomorrow morning it's gonna frost. And then they come in and get a product or they have some in their garage and they spray their plant real quick and bring it inside. Well, one application may or may not be sufficient. And so what I'd really like to encourage you in is try to get numerous applications in and ideally with numerous different products. 
because you got different chemicals and different modes of action of how these are going to kill insects and different insects that the insecticides are gonna kill. So one of my favorites, neem oil. Um, it's an oil, so you gotta shake it really good, agitate it really, any of the liquids in a bottle, you always wanna shake them really good before you spray them on your plants. Really important is that you coat not just the top side of the leaves, but you get the underside. So you gotta get down and, and spray up like that to get on the undersides, because especially like spider mites, there's one of, here in the Midwest anyways, one of our common uh, pest problems uh, on house plants and tropicals, you really gotta spray the bottoms because a lot of times they're on the underside. Um, however, mites have a really fast life cycle. They reproduce, it's like a five day, uh, in five days there's the next generation. And so you gotta be really diligent about numerous sprays about five to seven days apart. So usually I'll like to use a neem oil, um, there's a new product out called Mitex, which is also, it's all um, botanical oils. So it's cottonseed oil, clove oil, garlic oil. Um, you know, anytime we're talking about plants that we're bringing in the house, the kids could be touching, the pets could be touching. Using organic products is always a win. Um, so that's another really great oil product that's gonna kill insects by smothering. Um, and then you've got insecticidal soap, also a great organic one. And then another one that I love to use is just eight insect um, control home and garden. And this is sulfur and pyrethrins. Pyrethrins, interesting enough, is actually a chemical that's extracted from chrysanthemums, which right now it's fall. And uh, as you know, mum's the word. So this is a cool product. Uh, they actually extract that from chrysanthemums, the pyrethrins. And that's a great chemical that's gonna kill more of your aphids and other kind of crawling insects where a lot of these are gonna be better on scale, mealybugs, spider mites, stuff like that. So that covers spraying for insects and pests. Two things I'll show you here. These are Felco pruners. These are Joy Shin snips. Both of these I love. These are both like, both of the best pruners and snips that you can buy. Um, and if you're somebody that's really into gardening, house plants, you're doing a lot of stuff with plants, these are worth the investment. They're gonna be a little bit more than your basic pair of pruners that's 20 bucks. You know, these are gonna run you probably anywhere between 60 and 100 bucks. But I'm telling you, these will last a lifetime. You can switch the blades out, you can sharpen them. Um, and the Joy Shin are just a really high quality pair of snips. So both of these, I highly recommend you have these around because again, as you're bringing your plants in, you might need to do some selective pruning, snipping off some branches, or using your little snips to kind of cut off a couple leaves. Um, or even sometimes there'll be like, um, you know, kind of a brown tip to the leaf and maybe just even kind of shearing off that ugly looking tip to the leaf. Um, so those are great to have on hand so we can clean the plants up as we bring them in. Cause you know, your home is a beautiful space. The last thing you want to do is bring a bunch of ugly looking plants into your home. So getting them cleaned up, making them look nice. Another product I brought out to show you is the leaf shine. Um, this product, you do need to read the label on. There's certain plants you are not supposed to spray this on um, because it can actually kill them or damage them. So do read the label, just like all the chemicals. Um, the number one thing about chemicals, you always read the full label. You know, you can think you're doing all kinds of good and go out there and spray everything. And if you're doing it at the wrong temperatures um, on the types of plants you shouldn't, you can cause a lot of problems. So same with this product here. The reason I want to talk about this though is this plant, this product is really cool because if your plant looks just really dusty and dirty from being outside all summer, you spray this on the leaves and it just shines. It looks like a million bucks, night and day difference. If you've never tried it, I'd encourage you to try it. It's a really great product for cleaning the leaves and just making the plant look really pretty again. Um, so that's as far as cleaning it, spraying it, um, like I said, with repotting, I don't recommend that. You can do it if you have to. Say you've got a combo pot with a bunch of annuals and maybe a croton or a cordyline or a bougainvillea or something that you're like, hey, that's a really cool plant. I'd love to winter that over and have it next year. Well, you can take that out of the big combo pot and replant it into a smaller plastic pot just to winter it over and then shove it back into that combo pot next spring. Um, and in that situation, yes, I would probably replant it rather than leaving it in a huge ceramic pot or something and having to move that big pot into your house. So in a situation like that, I would say replanting is a good idea. Now, once we get the plant inside, um, another little pest thing that we'll talk about, gnat sticks. Um, these are great, it's just sticky paper. And so you get a little 
get a little popsicle stick basically and sticky paper. You take off the white paper on there and then it's super, super sticky. So if you have fungus gnats and things, that works really well on indoor stuff and uh, it's pesticide free. So that's a great product to use on the inside. Another thing we're gonna wanna talk about once we bring it inside is location. Now, I'm gonna go back a step because I kind of forgot to mention, when you're bringing plants inside, you've got them outside on your patio, full blasting hot sun. You move them inside and maybe let's say you even have a west or a south window that's really sunny. It's still not near as sunny as it was on that patio outside getting blasted with sun. So ideally we would like you to transition your plant for about two to three weeks into lower light environments and acclimate that plant before you bring it inside. So you might, let's say it's out on a hot west or south patio. You might throw it on the east side where it gets sun for five hours in the morning and shade the rest of the day. And then you might do that for five to seven days. And then after that, you might throw it on the north side of the house where it really doesn't see any direct sunlight all day. And it's just bright indirect light. Do that for another five to seven days and then bring it into your house and put it in that bright sunny window. That will help that plant acclimate and have less issues bringing it straight into the house. Sometimes your highlight plant, something like a ficus even, um, outside loves that full hot sun. You bring it inside and boom, it sheds like half its leaves within the first month. That's a big bummer. Well, if you can acclimate that a little slower, it's gonna overall be happier bringing it inside. So make sure you acclimate your plants. Another thing when we're talking about your plants coming inside, like we were saying, you need to acclimate them into a lower light. Well, some people don't have a good south or west window. So there's a lot of your, your tropical plants that would be outside in the summer that are getting full hot sun. And if all you have is a north window, that really may not be enough light. So I brought out a grow light as well. Now there's little bulbs, there's strips, there's all kinds of grow lights out there. The important thing is buy a high quality one because uh, quality does matter when we're talking about grow lights. Um, the other thing I like to do, I like to use the bulbs because uh, this type of bulb, here, I'll just open it up and show you, but this type of bulb, you can just screw that into most any lamp. So say you have like a bedside lamp or a desk lamp or even like a big floor lamp that comes up and over, you can screw that in there and you aesthetically don't have some ugly looking grow light situation in your house. You're not gonna have, you know, the FBI raid in your house, like what's going on in there? They got this whole grow light set up. Um, but this will, you know, screw right into a lamp. So aesthetically your house still looks pretty and you can just put that right over top the plant. Typically with grow lights, you wanna be about 12, no more than probably 20, 24 inches above the plant. You know, if my grow light's way up here and my plant's way down here, the plant will actually stretch up to the light. So you wanna keep the grow light pretty close to the plant. And usually it's about 12 hours on, 12 hours off to have enough light for that plant to be happy inside if it's a higher light plant. The other thing I wanna talk about inside is fertilizing. So once we figure out where we're putting our plant inside, you don't need to do as much fertilizing in the winter months. Again, we don't wanna push active growth in the winter time. We have short days, we have cloudy days. Um, overall, the growth you're gonna get in the winter is not gonna be near as pretty as the growth you're gonna have when the days are longer and it's brighter. So on any fertilizer, so this is our family tree all purpose. Um, it's a water soluble, so you're gonna mix it into a gallon of water. When we're watering outside, you're gonna use a tablespoon of the gallon. When we're watering inside, it's gonna be a teaspoon. Per gallon. Most all fertilizers are going to have different rates based off of seasonality or based off of exterior and interior. So it's again, just like the chemicals, it's really important. Read the label. More is not better. You know, I, I get accused all the time in my house where, you know, my wife's like, hey, two of those would be great. And so I'm like four, you know, because that'll get me feeling better quicker. Well, that's not helpful. Like that could actually harm you. So uh, same with your plants, make sure you're reading the label, pay attention to what it's saying, and follow the recommended rate. And if you're not sure, or you're confused by it, call us here at Family Tree or call your local garden center and get some advice. Because the last thing you wanna do is just guess and kill your plant, because too much of a good thing can definitely lead to a bad thing. So fertilizing is important, but again, it's not a huge necessity in the winter time. If anything, maybe a teaspoon in a gallon, every other month. Maybe we do it in November, then maybe we do it again in January, and then we skip uh, February, do it in March, and then once we get back into the spring, we can start really picking up our fertilizing again to help that plant grow and be healthy. Um, so fertilizing is gonna be important. Watering. Watering is one of, again, the hardest things that we talk about because there's a lot of misunderstanding around watering. 
most all house plants when you water them want to be completely saturated so you know you could have a pot you know that's i don't know 10 inches tall 10 inches wide and um, i always say man put a gallon of water through that when you water it soak the crud out of it so that way the whole root ball is saturated what i find a lot of people do you know they'll fill up their little um, watering can and they'll go around and they'll just spritz this one they'll spritz that one they'll spritz that one well all you did was water this far down into a pot when you've got a pot this deep all those roots down here never even got moisture and so that plant can start running into all kinds of issues you know people come in well I water them every you know two or three days I just spritz them a little bit and the, the reality is what you run into is that top layer of soil never dries out the bottom part of soil never gets moisture and now you have fungus gnat problems because there's a moist environment now you have roots rotting at the top you have roots at the bottom never getting hydrated so now the plant's showing symptoms of too wet too dry it's all kinds of pissed off and you're confused and frustrated. You come in here, we're trying to figure it out and it's, it, it's a debacle. So the reality is when you water, saturate the plant uh, all the way through. And just cause water comes out the bottom, I hear this way too much. People go, well, water came out the bottom. All that means is water came out the bottom. That doesn't mean the root ball is saturated. So even if water's coming out the bottom, keep soaking it. Any plant that's like, I'm gonna say 10 inches or smaller, um, is fairly easy to manage in the house. And what I'd really encourage you to do is just take those to the sink or the bathtub, soak them really, really good all the way through. Water's coming out, just keep doing it. Um, let them drip dry overnight and put them back in their spot the next day. You know, once you get to plants that are 12, 14, 17 inches big uh, pot, it, it's a little bit harder to move a big heavy thing all over the house and if it's eight foot tall, you know. So in that situation, you're gonna to have to manage that water in that environment a little differently. And we have some tips and tricks that we could talk through on how to manage that. But the reality is a lot of people have smaller stuff. Most things are 10 inch and smaller. Um, that's easy to carry over to the sink or the bathtub, soak it really good, or wait for a day when it's you know 50 degrees out and then take it outside, soak it really good. But you have to be important, or you have to be really careful with that because um, if a plant's been inside and it's acclimated to a lower light, you take it outside on a nice 50 degree day in January and full hot sun, it can actually sunburn. And so then people come, oh my gosh, what happened? Well, it actually got sunburned, just like me and you. If we're inside all winter long and then we get a nice sunny day, we go out in short sleeves, we can actually get sunburned because our skin's not acclimated to that. Plants are the same, so you gotta be careful of that. Um, one thing with watering cans, I, my theory is this there's a lot of watering cans out there most of them are you know these hideous blue red turquoise yellow plastic things like to me that is really not very pretty in the house uh so you're probably going to throw that in the garage i hope you're not leaving that out in your house because it's probably not very attractive but there are some really cute watering cans now and here's my thing like this can sit up on a shelf next to the fireplace and actually be a really cute piece of decor um, so make the investment into a nicer watering can, something that's cute, something that's decorative, whether it's something glass, whether it's something, you know, more brass or like a black metal one, something that fits, fits your aesthetic in your home so that you can, you know, second it as a piece of decor. And then you can also use that to water your plants. Typically for house plants, you want something with a really small spout. You know, if it's got this big old watering head on it uh, for outdoor pots, well, you try to do that in your house, you're going to make a mess potentially and get water all over the place. Um, so typically for indoor stuff, you want to find something with a little narrower spout. Uh, so it's a little easier to control where that water is going. But again, for me, I like taking almost all of my plants to the sink, soak them really good, let them drain out overnight, put them back the next day. So with that, I brought out a cork mat. Cork mats are one of my favorite things that not enough people know about. So what I do with these is any of my pots in my house, I don't like how saucers look. I don't know about you, some people are great with saucers. I just don't like how they look. Doesn't fit my aesthetic. So all my pots either don't have a drainage hole, which we can talk about that, but if they have a drainage hole, what I'll do is I'll take them to the sink, soak them really good, let them drain out overnight. Well, inevitably a few drops and dribbles are gonna come out once I set it back on my furniture. I don't wanna ruin my furniture, and that's where the cork mat comes into place. You put the plastic side down, you put the cork side up, you set your pot on top of that. If a few little dribbles come out, the cork absorbs it and your furniture is safe. So these are a great resource. This is also great because say you've got a big heavy ceramic pot, a lot of times on the bottom, they are not smooth and just perfect. 
A lot of times they're rough. There can be little chunks of clay and stuff down there. And you slide that big pot across your wood floors or your tile and you can scratch it. So anytime I got a bigger ceramic pot, I'm gonna set it on top of a cork mat uh, to protect my floors more so than the dribbles. So cork mats are a great resource. Uh, if you don't know about it, try it out. I think you'd be really happy with that. Um, another tool with watering, a water meter. Now, this is just your basic as it gets water meter. Um, it's literally one to four dry, wet, really, really simple. Um, if you're somebody that just really doesn't like getting your fingers dirty, um, I get it, you know? Um, so that's where this comes into play. You got a nice long probe on there. You can shove it way down into the soil. The important thing on this is, say my pot is as deep as this. Well, if I only shove this into here, that's not probably the most accurate read. I need to really get it about half to three quarters of the way down the pot so that I can actually tell down in here what's going on. Say this is all dry, but this is just sopping wet. The plant's not ready for a drink yet. Most any house plant needs to dry at least halfway down, if not a little further in between waterings or you're gonna end up with symptoms of the plant being too wet for too long, which I see more often than not. So. You can use the water meter, it's a great tool. Um, I just use my finger, I shove my finger down into the soil and feel it and go, yep, it's wet or nope, it's dry. Um, but if you know that's hard for you to tell or you don't like doing that, that's where this tool comes into play. Um, so as far as bringing your house plants in, we wanna clean them up really good before we bring them in. Once we get them in, there's a few things to think about acclimating them to their new spot, not just taking them straight from outside, throwing them in a corner, uh, making sure you have the watering cans, the, the moisture meters, whatever you need to be successful when you get them inside. Um, and again, if you wanna come pick up one of these catalogs, there's a ton of useful information in here, or you can get this as a PDF version uh, in the link below. And we would love to share that information with you. Appreciate you guys taking your time to hang out with me today, talking about bringing houseplants inside. Have an awesome day.